big thanks to our sponsors who make uh, who made this season of our membership meetings possible. So let's give them a big uh, thank you. We want to thank Wintrust Bank. We want to thank People's Gas, Bear Pro Paint, Hillco Redevelopment Partners, ComEd, and as a bronze sponsor for today, GSG Consultants. All right, Ashley, you are live. The floor is yours. Welcome. All right. Well, thank you all for allowing us to present on this project. And um, we also have Jay Rifty, who's the senior VP at Pepper Construction, and Lance Trich, who is the VP um, at Pepper um, all over the schools division. Um, so uh, like mentioned, we're with Pepper Construction, and today we're going to present on this uh, Oak Park and River Forest High School, Project 1, Phase 2, Main Entry, Welcome Center, Student Commons, and Classroom Renovations Project. So uh, we'll quickly just go through an injunction, project team, project overview, rendering, bid information, phasing, next steps, questions, and thank yous. Um, so would like to first start out, um, like all others, uh, thank you to all the veterans and their families for your service and commitment to this country. We truly all appreciate it. Um, and then um, as far as the project team goes, um, we have Oak Park River Forest High School as the owner. The architect and um, landscape architect is going to be FGM. Our civil is Erickson. Structural is McCluskey Engineering. MEP AMSCO, SMNW is going to be our acoustics, audiovisual, audio visual, and security. And then, as mentioned, um, we, Pepper Construction, are the construction manager. So, this project um, is going to take place over the next three summers, beginning the summer 2021 through summer 2023, with miscellaneous work taking place during the school years. All contractors must be union, and for this project, we do have participation goals for MBE and WBE firms. It's 15% MBE and 5% WBE. Uh, here's Ashley, just some... Pro sorry, Ashley, to cut you off, but you might want to just mention the, the reason that the project is uh, a union project is because the school district has a project labor agreement in place. That's what's necessitating that requirement. Thank you, Lance. Um, what you see on the screen are just a few project renderings that's provided by FGM. Um, these are all taken in various spaces of the main entry in the commons. This is going to be at the new entry vestibule. And um, these three, um, I guess you can't see my arrow, sorry about that. Um, the top left, top right, and the bottom right, those are all within the main entry and commons. And the bottom left is actually uh, within one of the science labs. So the project was actually, um, the documents were actually sent out yesterday. So um, it's still very fresh to the, uh, out to all the participants. Um, there will be a non-mandatory pre bid meeting on November 18th. Uh, due to COVID, uh, we just want to make sure that the groups are small. So we will have multiple time slots um, as if, Anyone would like bid documents, uh, you can just reach out to me. And within those bid documents, it has all the time slots available. I believe it's 9, 10, 11, and 2 p.m. on that day. So you just reach out to me to email to RSVP. And if at any point in time those groups become too large, we will add additional times to that. Uh, the bid due date will be December 9th. Um, so again, that's going to be tied to a board meeting. Uh, so we don't anticipate that shifting. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there that that date is tied to a board meeting approval. As far as bid packages, um, as you can see, there's a full list of them on the screen. Um, I know that there's uh, a few HFCA members uh, who have reached out to me as far as painting uh, bid packages, but please, please, please reach out to me. We can, like mentioned, the bid documents went out yesterday evening, so it's still very fresh on the street. So there's definitely enough time to get the documents out to you. So you can take a look, ask as many questions as possible, um, and then also um, um, any questions will be reflected in the upcoming uh, addendum as well. So if any of these packages fit your scope of work, please reach out. Moving forward to project phasing, um, as mentioned to start, 
This work will take place from summer 2021 through summer 2023. Uh, you can see that there's going to be multiple types of work. We have it split out into project one, capital improvements and health like safety. So there'll be various uh, tasks going on within each of these types of projects throughout the years in the summer. Um, you can see that there is some work taking place December 2021 through May 2022. And then also one item to note, um, the tennis courts renovations, um, although it does say summer 2022, that will likely be starting in the spring. It's essentially um, as soon as we relocate our uh, construction trailer, we will have access to begin on those tennis courts. So this schedule is um, what we have in the bid documents. Of course, there's some flexibility, whether there's, uh, still closures with COVID or, you know, the school allows us to get into some of these spaces sooner rather than later. Um, there's some flexibility with that. So some of the next steps, uh, if any of you have worked on a PEPPER project before, uh, there is a pre-qualification process. One thing to make mention, uh, the pre-qualification process does not have to be 100% complete in order to provide a bid on due date. Um, there is an AIA A305 form that if you do not have your pre-qualification filled out, we do request that you send that to us at least before uh, your bid is due. And mm -hmm. if you do have a question on if your pre-qualification is still in um, good standing, you can reach out to me to see if it is expired. Um, the renewal process, um, I don't believe, uh, takes that long, and I can put you in contact with those uh, proper people as well. And also, um, as far as getting the invitation to bid, you can reach out to me, make sure that I have the correct company uh, email address so that I can make sure that's who the ITB is sent to. Um, now it's going to open up the floor to questions. Ashley, can, I, can, I, have? can I jump in Absolutely. and add just a little bit? One of the things that we also are looking to do is we've got the prime trade packages that Ashley mentioned, and it is a public procurement process to where you do have to provide a bid bond and then a performance and payment bond for the full value. If you're bidding on the entire prime trade package, that being said, we're really looking for uh, contractors that might want to just bid a, on a portion of a particular prime trade package and be a subcontractor to those primes and really encourage you to reach out to Ashley and the team. If you have an interest in that, because we want to take down your company information. We can still provide you with the bid documents through our system. We want to share your contact information with the prime trade contractors that will be bidding on those packages. So they have an opportunity to reach out to you. And then uh, we'll also share with you um, which companies are bidding on the prime trade packages. So you can reach out to them and make sure that you have an ability to bid on a portion of their package and get your information to them prior to bid day. Thank you, Jay. Very good. All right. So, uh, Chris, do we have any questions that were posted? Just give me a second here. Uh, are there apprenticeship goals on this project? Um, I'll take that one, Ashley. Currently, we don't have a specific apprenticeship goal. There will be a work a workforce diversification uh, goal that we're going to ask the low responsive bidders of each package uh, to try to commit to. Again, their goals and they're not mandatory, but this particular client in that community um, is really focused on having not just a diverse group of contractors working on the project, but also within the workforce. So we do have goals, 15% MBE and 5% WBE in terms of our workforce. So we're really looking for our partners that are successfully the low bidders on these prime paid packages to contribute and, and, and be committed to establishing some goals and working towards those goals. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Okay. We have another question here. Uh, just for confirmation, are subs required to have bonding? Ashley? Yes. So um, as Jay mentioned, uh, there is a, a bond that's required at bid time. Um, and then also a uh, payments and performance bond is due for the project as well. Um, so all of this information will be included in the bid documents. And if there's any questions upon receiving them, please feel free again to reach out to anyone um, on the PEPPER team and we can further explain any of those items, public procurement, um, whatever the case may be. Ashley, maybe I could elaborate a little more too on the, the prime trade contractors, the ones that are submitting the bid that would be required to have, you know, a, a bid bond of 10% of the value of the work. And then 
follow up with a payment performance bond for the 100% of the value, but the second and third tier contractors under them wouldn't necessarily need to do that. And that's kind of what Jay was reiterating earlier that would kind of open up some other opportunities as opposed to just at the prime trade contractor level. Oh, okay. You know, and, and on those, I have another question here. Will you unbundle large trades, if any? Um, I'll, I'll jump oh. in and answer that. We, we've already established the bid packages. There could be some tweaks that we might do, um, but because of the complexity of the work and the multiple years that it's that that it goes over, we we felt we've unbundled unbundled them to the level that we can for the benefit of the client. So I think at this stage, those bundles will stay as is, unless we find that over the next week or so, we find another way to unbundle them that then gives the client an advantage with that unbundle. Gotcha. Okay. We have one more question. Do bidders need to consider needs to con do bidders need to consider changes in a material pricing? I, 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 if I understand it correctly, I think they might be talking about like material escalation over kind of the duration yes. of the project. And, and the answer to that question would be um, currently yes, because we would be locking into a contract with you know the low prospective bidders for the duration of the project. So they would have to include both labor and material escalation throughout the duration of the project, correct? Gotcha, okay. And I think we have one more question. Uh, the best way to contact Pepper Construction about this job? Well, I will actually switch to the next slide. Um, you can reach out to me. My email address is at the bottom of the page. And that's a stapleton at pepperconstruction.com. And if I don't know the answer, I can definitely direct it to Jay, Lance, or Josh, who, whoever might be better suited to answer. Okay. We have another question. Which certifications do you take? So right now we've actually um, left the certifications pretty open and within our bid documents, we have City of Chicago, uh, County of Cook, National Minority Supplier Development Council, Chicago Minority Business Development Council, Small Business Administration, with Women's Business Development Center, State of Illinois, a CMS, uh, NASBE program. So it's fairly open as far as um, the certifications that we would take. Okay, uh, another question here. What is the pre-qualification process? So um, there's actually that, there's a pre-qualification link on the Pepper website. And through that, uh, there's multiple items that you need to upload. Uh, there's uh, some things that you just need to fill out as well on the website. Uh, but it's all electronic um, through the pepper.com. Um, if there's any questions on that process, uh, you can reach out to me further. Uh, but it, it's pretty self-explanatory as far as the paperwork and the questions that are needed through the website. I might Ashley, be able to... Yeah, I was going to jump in real quick, Lance. And, and it's just, just completing the pre-qualification process within Pepper. That will not prohibit you in any way mm -hmm. for bidding the project or being a low responsive bidder. There's also an AIA form that you need to either have submitted previously to the school district or Pepper on their particular projects or make certain that you fill out that, that AIA form that's in the bid documents, which is a typical qualification form that then would be submitted with your bid as well. That is an important component to being a low responsive bidder. Lance, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I just wanted to add that, you know, uh, our pre-qualification process, um, reviews companies for two components, one for financial and one for safety. And on our private or on our public work like this project, every contractor provides, all of our primes try, uh, provide payment performance bonds. So we don't necessarily need the financial component of the pre-qualification process, but we really do need the safety component. That's probably the more important component that we would need. And that's mostly just to enter into a contract agreement. We need to ensure that you know, we're working with contractors that um, that are, that are, feel that safety is their number one priority. Okay. 
Another, another follow-up question on the pre-qualification. Is the pre-qualification for this project only, or will it be taken to, into account for future PEPR projects? That's a great question. Um, our pre-qualification process, um, once completed, you have to re-up it every year. Um, but it okay. does. But it, but does it would. Have, it, go ahead, yeah, Lance. Yeah, so it would account for other projects, and, and it's a great way to, to get, um, you know, to get some more insight on some other opportunities that we have out there, because a lot of our project managers look to our pre-qualification system, you know, when they're selecting bidders for their projects. All right. So just to clarify, so it's yes, but it just needs to be updated every year. Correct. All right. All right. And uh, we have no more questions, Chris. All right. So with that, uh, I want to thank Pepper Construction. Thank you very much, Jay, Lance, and Ashley. Appreciate it coming out. This is a uh, very good timing. Obviously, the the bids just went out yesterday. We definitely look forward, and we'll definitely get our members involved in this one as well. So appreciate you coming out and joining us this morning for uh, providing this presentation on this project, which is a very important project. And obviously.